In this presentation, we're talking about strategic energy management planning, and we're going to use Energy Star's Portfolio Manager as a tool. This particular presentation is an overview and is the beginning of a series of presentations on strategic energy management planning, which also include goal setting, action planning, measuring results, and maintaining the program. What is a strategic energy management plan? It is a systematic way for an organization to understand and control how it uses energy and how to minimize energy waste. According to EPA, as much as 30% of energy used in some buildings is wasted. Why have a strategic energy management plan? Well, our definition of plan is an official document that represents an organizational commitment and expectation. So in that context, it identifies energy efficiency as an organizational value, it empowers employees to take action, and it validates that the organizational resources can and will be used to support the effort where needed. Now there are four major parts to the strategic energy management plan that we are going to be looking at. Number one is goals and it includes an assessment. They are measurable and they include a time frame. Number two, actions. A list of specific improvements that are going to be implemented. Measurement. A method of determining the effectiveness of those measures. And finally, number four, maintenance. We want to make sure we have a plan to sustain the effectiveness of the program effort. Now let's look at each one individually. We'll start with goals. The question here is how do you determine a reasonable goal? Well first you have to assess where you are compared to other schools and that's where Portfolio Manager comes in. Then you look at what's reasonable to do in that school you determine how you will measure the improvement and then you consider what resources are needed and what are available for the effort. When you benchmark with Energy Star's Portfolio Manager it's going to lead you to an Energy Star score for that school which essentially is a percentile ranking from 1 to 100. Once you get that score you'll be able to see where your school falls in terms of what approach you might take for goal setting. For example, if your school is a 75 or higher, then your approach to that goal might be just to maintain the excellent performance that you're already having. If it's number two, you may look at small improvements to get it up just a little bit higher, but it's already above average. Now when you look at quadrants three and four, we're looking more at opportunities. And so in those goals, we want to make sure we include more diagnostics and assessment to find where the opportunities are. And it may be, when you look at quadrant four, some more long-term solutions and capital investments may be required. When we look at actions, the question is, how do you determine what to do? Well first we have to understand how the school uses energy. We may find that we are measuring major end-use equipment to find out how much power it's using. We also may decide to assess equipment run times to find out how long the equipment is running. There are two major factors involved when determining how much energy is consumed. Number one is power, which is the rate at which energy is used. And number two, time, how long it's in use. So if we put this into a formula, we see that power times time equals energy consumption. So if we can affect either one of these, power or time, or both, we can reduce our energy consumption. The other thing that's interesting is power tends to be equipment oriented. So if we're going to affect the amount of power that's used, typically those are capital improvements, 
retrofit projects so that the new equipment uses less because it's more efficient. When we look at time, we look at an operationally oriented measure. And that may be something that involves our O&M budget as opposed to our capital budget. We'll look more at the dynamics of this in the presentation on actions. Next is measurement. The question here is, how do you know how much you're saving? There are two methods that we're using for measurement. One is called benchmarking, which we've been talking about. Another one is called measurement and verification, or M&V for short. Benchmarking, as we talked about before, is simply a comparison. When you are benchmarking with Portfolio Manager, you're comparing your energy use statistics that are weather normalized so you can compare them directly with other schools and other climate zones based on the schools in the national sample. This process is pretty simple and it's no cost or at least low cost. And the accuracy is not bad. It's between 75 and 95 percent. This is good for budgeting and planning purposes and for use in our strategic energy management plan. When you use Portfolio Manager, there is a real neat feature called Set Energy Performance Target. In this particular example, the annual energy cost for this sample school is about $72,000 a year. And the current score is 38. So we want to reduce by 10% the energy consumption which will raise it to a target of 51, still about average. And we find that about $7,000 a year is what we could save, a ballpark figure, if we could make that accomplishment. But now we can look at some other things. What if we invent, invested two years of savings, or three years, or five years? How much would we invest to accomplish that kind of reduction. Those are things that we definitely need to think about and we can get a good perspective of using Portfolio Manager. Now M&V is a different kind of thing. It's a systematic approach using measuring devices and equipment and established industry formulas for calculating savings. It's fairly technical and it's moderately expensive but it's more precise than benchmarking. Typically, the industry standard methods are based on the International Performance Measurement and Verification Protocol. This is a good approach for determining specific savings, especially when you're paying contractors for the work. In other words, if what you pay to contractors is based on the savings they achieve by their work, you want to make sure you have a pretty accurate system for determining what those savings are. And that's what IPMVP is going to help you do. And finally, number four, maintenance of the program. The question here is, how long will the savings last? Well, that leads to a couple other questions. What will you do with the cost savings that are achieved? What additional costs may be required to maintain the program? And what additional costs will there be for monitoring systems efficiencies? So let's take a look at each of these questions in more detail. Cost savings. You could use them to pay for the improvements that you make to achieve those cost savings. In which case you would want to look at what time threshold you're willing to invest like we talked about before. Do you want to use three years, five years, ten years of savings to pay for the improvement? You could use the cost savings to reinvest in additional efficiency measures or other sustainable features. You might have a program that, that involves a lot of people in the school and you want to use a monetary incentive awards program. Or you could just simply pay for other budgetary deeds. All of these are things that you can address in your strategic energy management plan and they will have a big impact on the effectiveness of your program. Now let's look at additional maintenance costs. As an example, building automation systems are pretty popular in many schools and it's found to be a very good value. But 
they're going to need updates from time to time. Software updates, you may add additional control points, things like that. Another thing is training and competency shift to new technologies. Or you might wind up spending some time with employee awareness. These are things that may be additional costs to help continue maintain the success of your program. Now I'd also like to address something else that's interesting particularly when you have improved or retrofitted a large equipment system like an air conditioning system or a lighting system. In a case like this, the newer system often, most of the time, does not require as much labor to maintain it as the old system. So there are some labor savings and they are calculable and measurable. However, that does not mean that there's going to be a budgetary savings in the labor category because what usually happens is the labor that was devoted to maintain the old system is now free to work on other backlog maintenance and repair projects. It's like you just hired a new labor force to go work on these other projects that you were not able to do before. And again, it is a measurable savings. It is a legitimate value. It's just that you may not be able to subtract it from your budgetary requirements because you're going to do other things with those employees. As your school begins to implement more and more best practices, you're no doubt going to find that you're going to include systems monitoring in your program. And this includes things like submetering, use of data loggers, and other software programs that take those inputs and give you a better picture of what's going on and can alert you to unusual energy use. So that is essentially the four major parts of our strategic energy management plan. And we're going to go into more detail in each of these sections in our subsequent presentations. In addition to being a format for our plan, it's also a process. And that concludes our overview of the Strategic Energy Management Plan using ENERGY STAR's Portfolio Manager.